I'm Gavin Winter, project manager for the Cube. And I'm Michael Doherty. Um, I was essentially looking after the content development across a number of projects. Well, uh, our experience in creating the Cube has been quite an amazing process over quite a long time because the Cube uh, has uh, the idea has been around for a while and it slowly evolved. There was a team put together. The, the concept, the physical concept evolved and then there was a very intensive year last year where it all came together both physically and with the content that we, we see here. Yeah, I think in terms of experience in developing the project, it, we really started with a picture on a napkin, so to speak, and Michael and I were both involved in that very early stage. Uh, the cube really started out as a, a cylinder because the void that we're in today was actually a hole through the building. Uh, and we've come such a long way from that. We went through a lot of uh, concept, concept forming uh, workshops and sessions with sketch artists and consultants to form basically the structure we're standing in front of today. Of course there was a core group who, who really pushed the whole thing forward but there are many people mm. who helped along the way. Yeah. And that really was made up of, we had the, the, the contracted builder, Leighton, uh, we had QUT, uh, and that involves central divisions, academic uh, faculties and uh, institutes, uh, right through to uh, specific consultants, uh, AV, IT, infrastructure vendors. It was a big, big group. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it still is a cube. I mean, there was, a, as Gavin said, there's an evolution of the design idea. And of course, like all good ideas, they have to evolve within the constraints of time, resources, and, and just what can be physically done. Right. And so some of our original ideas just can't be made even today. But we have really pushed the boundaries. And what you're seeing here is unique in the world at the moment, the scale of it. Well, the physical form of the cube we're standing in front of today is really essentially a boomerang. It's a 110 degree splayed multi-walled structure. Uh, the concept developed from a, literally a box with multiple sides and we went right through to conceiving the, the structure with 64 projectors inside a wall. We're, at one stage we were looking for the largest piece of glass we could purchase in the world for a screen but really when we rationalised the design we came to the, the wedge or the boomerang shape. Mm. What's important also to note is even though what you're seeing is just this, the, the two sides of the very large, there's also the other sides behind what you're seeing now, which are also part of the cube and they face outwards. I think it's designed to attract just about everyone. There's, there, I think there is something for everyone here, but clearly there are some priorities from QT's point of view. Clearly we want to um, engage with, with particularly new students, high school students. To, to let them understand that, that QUT is going to be at the forefront of development in science and technology. And this is really a, an example of what can be done when you, lots of a team of people get together. It's a place that's going to showcase science and technology. It's a place that's going to inspire people because you can tell by just the people behind us now. I mean, they come around the corner and they go, wow. Yes. Because it is actually inspiring. There's no doubt about it. So in terms of attraction, it's a physical attraction too. If you're passing by, the cube is designed to sparkle and bring you in. Uh, it's interesting to, to consider how the philosophies of, of the, the SEC precinct also are embodied here in the cube because obviously for QUT, science, engineering, it's going to be one of the major drivers of QUT in the future, particularly in research and, and undergraduate teaching. And the cube illustrates and exemplifies how we can do that in a very innovative and creative way. And so in a fundamental way, it does embody the philosophy behind the whole new center and behind the new push that QUT is bringing towards the science teaching and science research uh, in, in this state and perhaps in Australia. So one thing the cube uh, exemplifies is how the QUT has the talent and the resources within itself now to showcase some of the best that science and, and technology can offer. It, it can showcase the innovation that is here at QUT. Uh, and it's a hub. I mean, it becomes a focal point, not just for teaching uh, and research, but also for other content development. So not only IT, not only science, but it brings it all together to show what you can do. So it's a way of um, focusing and uh, clarifying and also becoming that nexus point about which a conversation can start about where we could go, particularly from an innovative research point of view. Absolutely, it's a draw card for the public.
that we we have every day. Uh, mothers and fathers and children and school students coming through the door and just wowing at the walls. Mm. Kids know exactly what to do when they get here. Uh, we had one particular uh, child was using his nose at one point on the touch walls and <laughs> you know it's just that that gravitational pull that the walls have mm. then mm. straight away they're going well okay I understand what this is now how can mm. I uh, play with it. In terms of the manufacturers we engaged to manifest the cube. We selected from a, num a number of manufacturers worldwide and distilled it down to really choose the, the best of breed, I, mm. I would say, of technology. And one of those manufacturers was Multitouch Limited from Finland. Now their product is unique in the world in that it's a computer vision through glass touchscreen, which is essentially a cameras seeing through the panel, not only your hand, but yourself. So the, the touch panel knows you're there. Now, the unique characteristics of these, this particular technology is they can be strung together in lengths, which you can see behind us. We have 20 panels in a row. Typically, a touch panel will have very large edges, and you can't do that. So we really work with that manufacturer on developing a prototype that, that we've installed here at QUT, uh, and we can, t can continue that journey with them. I, I get asked how much it costs. Uh, really, if you actually take in the full investment that QT has made, it's a multi, multi-million dollar endeavour. But what we're standing in front of today, about six million dollars. Uh, that includes a huge component of technology, of course, but content development and, and uh, concept development was a large component of that too. Hmm. Really, content drove this project. It was important to ensure that whatever we're going to put on the walls uh, informed the, de the technology and the structural design decisions. Do I think QT's got value for money? I think absolutely so, because not only have we got something which is an enormous wow factor, it's unique in the world. There'll be a lot of interest as we, as we open formally and people become aware of it. We're going to draw people from all over the world to come and see it, because you can't see something to the scale anywhere else at the moment. We've probably got 18 months leeway in that. Um, there are other large panel displays, but not at this touch level, not at this scale. So I think the value for money will, uh, will be there over a long term. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of attention to detail. We had to model exactly mm. what we were going to install because mm. there could not be any surprises. Mm. This hasn't been done before and we needed to know that we were going to get mm. what we paid for. There was a lot of planning and so what mm. you see here is exactly what we planned to have happen um, and there was a lot of very careful thought that went into it. Not just the physical layout but also the content. What's been absolutely wonderful in terms of us who are you know, jaded IT specialists to some extent, is to see the absolute joy of, of young people, and particularly quite small kids coming mm. in. They, they just get excited. They run around, they jump up and down, they excitedly tell their parents about things. I mean, if there's chairs, they'll grab the chairs and lift them up and move them over so they can touch higher and things. It's been, a, you know, it's just exciting to see yeah. kids just loving it. They, they take to it so, so quickly, though, I mean, you'll hear uh, today, the, the gasps, the, mm. uh, there's obviously the old profanity that might be uh, in shock and all, but the, really the, the reaction mm. for the young people, uh, they know exactly what they're getting, but mm. then they're awed by the actual uh, visual effect. And we effect. see so many you know, taking photographs, putting their phone, mm. standing in front of it, you know, take the photograph of me. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely an event that they want to remember. That's right. Mm.